Hi everyone, John Bowlerman here, the holiday season's most jolly bowler boy. We got little Ruru here. She was being loud and meowing, so now she's going to be on camera. Say hi, Ru. It's me. Oh, go behave. <sighs> Doing a job today I don't want to do. This is bowler number two. Now the one thing that a bowler boy can't seem to master is the paint job. So did this in the summertime and I haven't touched it since because I ruined the paint job. Roof's really nice, a little too thick on the sides and I got some runs. Plus the light was really bad as I was pushing it into evening. Didn't notice these things. Oh well. Lesson learned. And now I'm paying for it because now I have to sand this all off. I started last night, did 90 minutes worth. Well, this is the worst side. This has got the runs. Absolutely terrible. This part was better, but it's the first part that I sanded off. So I bought some aggressive 60 grit to knock it down as quickly as possible. This side turned out okay too. Not there. But I was a little too anxious to get the job done quick and that's not how painting goes. So let's go up here, see what that looks like. Oh, it's still frosty. But I had started on the back part last night so we'll get a better pick later. Birdie! Hi, Barty. You're so good at it. You're so good at it. Good job, Birdie. Birdie has been out of its cage for a couple days. Really needs to go back. But he sure likes dancing for us. How can you say no? Let's go, Birdie. Birdie! Sure, our tame really wants to go in the house. That's what you're hinting at, right, Birdie? There's Upgrade. Back from the vet. Kitty's got colds, but we got medicine. This is KK. He's got some sort of ear thing going and his balance is off. So, need to deal with that too. Falls down the stairs all the time. Right, KK? Oh, you like to purr. We need to fix all you dysfunctional cats. What kind of an upgrade are you that gets sick? Kitty? Roo Roo. Hi Roo. Oh, itty bitty kitty. Hi itty bitty. Look at this other Christmas miracle. It's a Jimmy. Oh, he wants to go in the house too, but he can't. He's suffering outside on this warm winter day. Oh, poor guy. Jiffer! If it wasn't clear before, we named Upgrade Upgrade as a veiled threat to Joofy that if he doesn't improve, he's out. We have a replacement. Frost has melted on this side, so dry it off and just start Knocking it down on this side. Let's give her.
Well, that's what the day is going to be. This. A lot of fun. Uh, well, a couple hours. I was able to get this side done. Day is short. Sun sets in two and a half hours, so I'll try to get the other side done. wasn't fun but I did a 60 grit pass knock down most of the main stuff on the sides just to finish that part there and finish the roof tomorrow well I spared you day two of sanding it was just another six and three quarters hours of sanding hi birdie but got it all knocked down with the 60 grit Knocked it down for another three and three quarter hours with 80 grit. And then the 120 grit only took 90 minutes. I will knock it down one more time with 220, but that's when everything's done and right before sending it to the painter. Birdie, I'm trying to film here. Okay, now it is time to share John Bollerman's recipe for making a Caesar. But before we do that, we should probably do a little bit of history into the Caesar. Now, the Caesar is the illegitimate brainchild of John Caesar, a Norwegian fishing mogul and food industrial capitalist who immigrated to Canada before World War I in 1919. He'd made his fortune selling clam meal. Press, and you dry out clams, you grind it down, and it had a wide range of applications at the time as fertilizer, a topical muscle pain reliever. In remedial school settings, it was also used as a protein supplement for dim children. But with industry, you always have a byproduct. Now, what you do, you press the clams, you're left with clam juice or clam liquor. Now, as we all know, clam liquor doesn't really have an application. And we know the strict environmental laws back then that exist today against dumping clam liquor. John Caesar was left with a bit of a dilemma on his hands. What to do with all this clam liquor? Now, what does every maverick captain of industry do with a product that's poisonous and they can't use. You stick it in something humans will consume. Uh, fluoride into water and toothpaste, mercury into fillings, copper mine tailings into Seagram's Five Star Whiskey. So John Caesar had to figure out what to put the clam liquor into. At the time, he was thinking a lot about commercial air travel. And a lot of people saw the potential of that. But he went beyond, he just saw all the details and the minutia of the future. I mean, when he thought about air travel, he thought about everything. Of how impossibly shaped the laboratories would be. He thought about how uncomfortably close each of the seats would be. The popularization of fat chicks and how that would be even more uncomfortable. But he also thought about what would the people drink? What would they crave more than anything else when they're in the air that they would never think about drinking when they're on the ground? Tomato juice. And that solved his problem. So what did he do? He shipped up a whole bunch of tomatoes from the USA on the on the ground railway, brought it to his processing facilities, pressed the tomatoes, combined the two, you get clammed tomato juice. Now that doesn't sound too appealing, but it was all a matter of branding. So his daughter Mott, they also called her Hot Mott for obvious reasons. She thought, hey, let's combine that. Let's call it 
clamato juice. But that sounded too American, so we need to switch it to the more European uppity and call it clamato juice. Still, sales lagged, but John Caesar thought about one more poison that he could add. Vodka. And boom, the Caesar was born. One more poison he did add, MSG. Lots and lots of MSG. Now, with that history, let's get to making a Caesar. But first, how to make a bad Caesar. So now, why are we starting with a bad Caesar? Well, this is the standard Caesar that you're going to get when you go to a, a restaurant, your favorite Applebee's, you go to any boomer's place. This is how they're going to make a Caesar. Mmm, Caesars. Well, the most important part of a Caesar is the rim. Uh, honey, do we have any more soy milk? Oh, that looks lovely. Little bit of ice. Uh, going to measure this out. Oh, an ounce. I'm going to feel that tomorrow. Honey, did I tell you I found my yoga pants? They're in my man cave. Okay, little squeeze of this. Little squeeze of lemon. Or lime, but usually lemon. Oh, Tabasco. Not too much. Worcestershire. Whoa, whoa. Now, the Clamato. Oh, that looks good. Honey, do you want to ask your boyfriend if he wants me to make him a Caesar too? Now, this is what we call a soy Caesar. I'll be back. So, let's do this the bowler boy way. A bowler boy worthy Caesar simply has a lot more ingredients and a lot less Clamato juice. We're starting with two or three ice cubes. Measure that out however you want, but you're not using a shot glass. It depends on how you feel. Second, we're going to throw in the Worcester sauce. Everybody knows that, how much you want, whatever. What a mess. And we're going to follow suit with doing some hot sauce. This is homemade hot sauce, peach habanero from this year. This is stuff is nice and hot, but mildly hot with a wonderful flavor. So I would use something like that rather than going straight Tabasco. You can do that too. I don't care. Your hot sauce is your own friggin' preference. Next, a lime. Lots of lime. At least a quarter lime wedge. Boom. 
Okay, so now things start to get a little bit more Bowlerman. I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder. Now you can also do garlic powder. I like the onion myself, but I do like garlic powder. Of course, it's just a little bit more powerful and hot. So you got to balance that out with your other heat source. And of course, what we're going to do, which is popular, it's not like John Bowlerman's the first one to do this, but of course you have to have some pickle juice. Now I use pickle juice, but I've also used fermented pickles or uh, sauerkraut and kimchi. All are good. That's whatever you want and feel like having. Now make your own pickles, you friggin' degenerates. Hey, people are buying pickles. You know how bad pickles are from the store? And they have like food coloring in them to make them more pickly. Just make your own pickles. Why is this hard? We'll go with that. And it, yeah, and you buy the crap from the store. The juice is just much more powerful. You have to be careful. You can't put as much as I just did. Mine's more mellow and more delicious. Why do I have to explain all this? All right. The next bit, you need horseradish. Now again, this depends upon the mild or the hot one that you have. This is a more mild one, so I'm gonna do a whole scoop there and throw that in. We're getting there. Now here's a secret weapon too. This is salsa juice. When making salsa, you drain it and you can bottle it like this, it's fantastic. So I will add just a touch of this because it does taste like salsa, so you gotta be careful with it. But if I'm doing like a more keto-based one and trying to get away from the sugar of the Clamato, I'll put more. You also, if you wanna cut down sugar, just put some tomato juice in, you dingus. Okay, but we're basically at where we wanna be with the little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, but we're basically at where we want to be in terms of ratios with the ice and all the other liquids. You're at least half. Half full already. So you're just pressing it with Clamato. Not filling it from here like Soy Boy does. Disgusting. And that's what it should look like. Boom. So there you go. That's how you make a bowler boy Caesar. Now you no longer have to be a complete failure when you're hosting and be a disappointment to your family. Now that you know how to make a decent Caesar. Plus, make it your own. Just not more Clamato. Know why this is so hard. Okay, end of day three. What did I do? Well, did a sanding with the 220. And that went very quickly. I did the whole body again. Took off the tape, removed the tape that was there. Took some time to do, so... I mean, I just need a little bit of cleanup to do there. I had removed these screws, bolts, uh, so I could sand. So I'll replace those. Cleaned off the tape off the front window. Again, almost done cleaning. Removed all the tape, sanded down the door frame, the paint that was there. Cleaned up that window too. So just need to clean it up a little bit, touch up here and there, wipe it down, call Steve to see when he wants it, and it's ready for paint. Fantastic. Well, that's the end of the sanding project. That was 20 hours of sanding in total, plus removing all the old tape and all the gunk off of it. All because of a crappy paint job. So these things can be costly. So John Bowlerman's advice is don't skimp on something that you know you just can't do. Or as Homer Simpson would say, 
If something's too hard to do, it's not worth doing. Right, upgrade. Today's crypto pick is clown coin. From what I've seen from the last year, I think most of the world is really going to like it. Bye!